Okay, let's talk about how you go about doing weak acid calculations. Uh, when it comes to these, it's really important to understand that these are not strong acids. So um, if you recognize something's not on the list of strong acids, assume that it's a weak acid. And since this is not on the list of strong acids, we know it's weak. And also you find it here on the list of weak acids and their Ka values. Uh, we need to assume that because it's weak, although the concentration of the acid is 2.45 molar, the concentration of hydrogen ion will not be 2.45 molar, and we need to do a more complex calculation. So here's how it goes. When you want to do a calculation for weak acids, you need to understand that they do undergo the same kind of dissociation as a strong acid, but to a much lesser degree. Whereas in a strong acid, all of the acid becomes hydrogen and anion of some kind or another. Um, in a weak acid, only a few of them dissociate. The majority do not. So in this case, that means we have to, well, in all cases of weak acids, we need to assume that rather than a simple one-way reaction, it is going to have a mixture of product and reactant present at the same time, which is why you need a dissociation constant listed here, but we'll start with the general formula of a uh, dissociation constant is, so the, const so the constant has, is defined as the ratio of the concentration of products over the concentration of reactants. Oops, that's supposed to be brackets. There we go, have it lock focus on there. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's the definition of what the constant is. Now in the case of an acid, it's going to be the ratio of the concentration of these two products right here, hydrogen ion concentration, and in the, all presented the same ways in the notes, we said anion. Now in the case of hydrogen fluoride or hydrofluoric acid, the anion is a fluoride ion, but just the general anion will be represented like that. And then um, the original acid would be there on the bottom, that's an H, not another A. Okay, so that would be like the general formula. Now, let's address what it would be for this particular situation. If you look up on here, hydrofluoric acid, that's the Ka value, so this is, that value goes here. So K is this 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative fourth. There's no units on the value of K. That's equal to, it's still equal to products over reactants, it just means they'll have a ratio that's equal to this much. Um, so. Hydrogen ion concentration is what we're being asked for, so we're just going to call it X. I should just say this goes on top, so that's a hydrogen ion concentration, we'll just call it X. This, notice that it's a one-to-one -one ratio in the balanced equation, which means the amount of hydrogen, you have the same amount of anion. Since fluorines are anion, it's this, and it's the same concentration as this, which means we'll just put X again because they have the same concentration, so same concentration. And then for the acid, it is 2.45 molar, though that's when you start. Some of it will dissociate to make this. Not all of it, but some. So let's combine this. And we're going to do a couple of things. One, we're going to say x times x is x squared. And then on the bottom, we're going to take this 2.45 molar and we're going to make an assumption. We're going to say this is so small that it is insignificant, so we're just going to ignore it. And uh, just 2.45 molar. So now this equals to x squared over this. And now let's do some algebra. I'm going to times both sides by 2.45 to get 2.45 molar. I'm leaving the molar off, but it's 2.45 molar um, times 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative fourth. In fact, I'll even do this as it's just easy to see, equals x squared. So basic algebra to turn this and this into this, just times both sides by this. Now that means x is equal to the square root of 2.45 times 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative fourth. When you do that on your calculator, it comes out as, well actually let me do it on the calculator because I do have the answer but it might be good to show the process. So when you do it on the calculator it's really important to understand that you need to use parentheses or you will get a wrong answer. So on this case you do second function square root 
Oh, actually, let me redo that so it's within fully within view. Second function, square root is this button right here. And then I'm going to do 2.45 times. And then I'm going to do the scientific notation in parentheses. 6.6, .6, second function, EE minus 4. That's 6.6 .6 times 10 negative fourth. Close that first parentheses. Close the other parentheses that was way back at the beginning. So see, I got two left facing parentheses or right, whatever, two facing one direction and now two facing the other direction. Okay, with that, that gets me an answer that looks like that. Put that in scientific notation. And that's the unrounded answer. So x equals 4.021193853 times 10 to the negative second. But what is, don't forget what x represents. Well, actually, even before I do that, I'm going to round it for sig figs. So because that might suggest three sig figs, but because you use this number, that limits you to two. So two sig figs limits you to two sig figs in your answer. That's 4.0 times 10 to the negative second. And wait, what was this x all about again? Don't forget, x was concentration of hydrogen, which means molar H plus. I'm going to box that. OK, so that's the answer to that. Now, if moving on, these work the same way. Really, the only difference is different acids, so you have a different Ka, different concentration, so you have a different number here. But the process you do for this is basically the same for these, because aside from a different number and aside from a different Ka, it's the same question. There's nothing new or surprising about 1312B or C. So I'll leave those as is. Uh, let me adjust this to make it easier to deal with. And onward to a different kind of question, 13-13A, which is actually still very similar to what was just done earlier. So. Um, that means it's still a weak acid. You still have that same chart to work with. And so because of that, we're going to go through the same thing, assuming K equals. I have it focused a little better. There. Come on, there you go. Focus, silly camera. OK. So anyway, uh, it's still phenol. It's still going to be the same. The same it's still going to be the same way. Now, it's a more complex chemical formula, C6H5OH, but it's still going to do the same thing. When you put in water, it's going to dissociate to make C6H5O minus, that's your anion, and then a hydrogen ion. It's still a one-to-one -one ratio for everything. So it's still going to be hydrogen ion, and I don't want to write out that whole thing, so I'm just going to put anion. It's just easier. And then a uh, HA to represent the original phenol. OK, so once again, I look up the K value. K is, um, for phenol, is right there, 1.3 times 10 to the negative 10th. OK, so then um, having looked that up, K is equal to 1.3 times 10. Oops, that's not a good 10. Uh, to the negative 10th power. And that is equal to, uh, just as before, I'm going to put X for this unknown hydrogen concentration. Another x for this anion, because look, the hydrogen ion and the anion, it's a one-to-one -one ratio according to this balanced equation. And then uh, on the bottom, the concentration of the acid is this 0 0.56 molar. So uh, once I've done that, I've got to understand that that's the same as saying x squared over 0 0.56 molar. And then, uh, OK, so now I've got 1.3 times 10 to the negative 10th equals x squared over 0 0.56. I know I've left off the molar, but it, that's OK. It gets the idea across of what we're doing with our, our numbers. So now I just need to rearrange to solve for this one. So um, x squared, I got to times both sides by 0 0.56 equals 0 0.56 times 1.3 times 10 to the negative 10th. And then uh, x is equal to the square root of 0 0.56 times 1.3 times 10 to the negative 10th. Make sure that you watch these parentheses and use an appropriate calculator, or you will put in the right numbers and get the wrong answer. 
Okay, so uh, showing how this gets put in, second function square root of, let's see, what was it? 0.56, that's not, there you go, 0.56 times in parentheses, because you use parentheses every time you do scientific notation, 1.3 times 10 to the negative 10th. Close this first parentheses and add another one because, so you got those two parentheses, so you got to close them out with two more. All right, do that, and I get that. Put it in scientific notation, and I get that. X equals 8.5322. Nine, and it goes on, but I'm just going to call it there, even though I'm not done with this yet. Don't forget that X is the concentration of hydrogen. So that's concentration of hydrogen, but watch your question, because it didn't ask for concentration of hydrogen, it asked for pH. So why did I do this? It's because I know that pH equals the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So uh, with that given, I can now take the negative log of 8.53229 and more. You could use more decimals if you want, but I'm just doing this for convenience, times 10 to the negative sixth. And if you do that, you plug it in your calculator, it'll spit out the answer of, uh, let's see, pH 5.06893, blah, 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 a bunch of other ones. So let's round that. Uh, this number had two sig figs. This number had two sig figs. So you're, rounded to, you're rounding to two sig figs. pH of um, 5.1. That's what we're looking for. And of course, as a reminder, pH numbers are unitless. That's why you need to put an identifier inside your box so that we know what this number represents. Okay, so that is going to work the same way as this question here. So the work you do here works the same way as here. And I can say the same for, on the back side, this will also work the same way. Now, let's do uh, one of these as a further example, though, because this will require a different method of calculation. So, that said, you can still use the same ch table, and let's go with the same thing. It's a weak acid, which means K equals hydrogen ion concentration times anion concentration over uh, the original acid concentration, or rather the equilibrium acid concentration. So uh, as far as what you got to do with this, let's do the same thing. That's the acid. So HClO2 is going to dissociate to be hydrogen ion and the anion, which is ClO2 minus. That's the chloride right there. So that is this, this is this, and this is this right here. Notice one-to-one -one ratio. So that means whatever the concentration of this is, this is the same. So where do we get the stuff to put in here? Well, we need to find the hydrogen ion concentration. It didn't give us that, it gave us this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this to get the hydrogen ion concentration. And I'm gonna do that is remember that a hydrogen ion concentration is equal to 10 to the power of the negative pH. So that means 10 to the negative 1.56 power. And uh, let's see, actually I calculated that earlier. The answer came out to, what was it? 2.75422, and it went on for a while. You know, I'll just stop it here just because of convenience's sake. Um, I deliberately, too many sig figs here because we're not done yet. So that's the concentration of hydrogen. This number is this right here, and because of the one to one ratio, this number, in addition to representing this, also represents this A minus right here, the anion. They're going to have the same concentration because this is the anion. So. What does that look like? Um, K is equal to 2.75, times 10 to the negative second molar. I'll leave the M off. And then the exact same number again, 2.75, times 10 to the negative second. It's equal to those two over the original acid concentration. You see, oops, ran out of space, but the original acid concentration, which is not given. In fact, it asks what the original concentration of acid would be, so I'm going to put X because that's what we're solving for. So that's part of it. Now, do you see how these are the same number twice? 
Let's simplify. So uh, K is, according to the table, for nitrous acid, HNO2, that's 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. So K is this. And this is equal to this squared, because it's just the same number twice, so it's just 2.75. 4229 times 10 to the negative second. I'm going to square it. That represents this and way easy to write. So then once you've done that, the next thing, let's put this x right here. That's still there. So once you've got this set up, now you've got something you can solve for. Look, you can just, a simple rearrangement, times both sides by x, divide both sides by this, and you'll be able to solve for x, the original concentration of the acid. Now, I did mention, forget to mention one thing. Technically, this should be x minus 2.754229 times 10 to the negative second. But we're going to assume that this is so small compared to the x that you can just ignore it. And so we're going to leave it off for the sake of simplifying the mathematics. So once you rearrange to solve for x, um, you have x equals 2.754229 times 10 to the negative second squared divided by 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. And if you do that math, see I did it earlier, what did I get? I calculated that it comes out to 6.89616162, it goes on forever, so okay, close enough. Times 10 to the negative second molar uh, HClO2. Because don't forget, X represents the concentration of the acid. Um, so because of that, I need a round. Look, two sig figs, three sig figs, but we use two sig fig um, Ka values. So we got a round of two sig figs. That's 6.9 times 10 to the negative second molar HClO2. That's our concentration. Now, this is fine. I do need to mention something that some people may or may not notice when it comes to this. This, fortunately or unfortunately, is a very rare exception problem where this is the process that I want you to learn in class. This is how we show you to do it. And most of the time, this process is fine. But for this one question, it actually gives a slightly incorrect answer, actually a somewhat incorrect answer. Remember when I said that you subtract this number out, but you ignore it because it's small compared to this? Well, of all the questions to pick for number 13-14a, I picked the one where actually it does make a difference. This has a bigger Ka value than any of them, which means that this number is actually significant. See this? It's times 10 to the negative second. See this is times 10 to the negative second. They're of the same magnitude. So technically, 6.9 plus, uh, what is it, 2 point, we'll call it 2.8, comes out to 9.7 times 10 to the negative second molar HClO2. Technically, this is what the starting concentration would be, and then some of it dissociates to turn this into this, what's left, um, left over. So technically, the answer should be this. However, that said, this is the only question where it makes a difference. We will give you full credit if you show us that you understand the process by doing this. And all the other ones will be solved, like down here and down here by doing the exact same thing we did, including ignoring this minus right here because it's small compared to the x. So just want to mention that in case there's any confusion. Um, you will get full credit for this question, for this answer. And that's how I want you to know the process. All right, that's it. Happy studies.